Hey guys, this is Mr. C, and in this video, we're going to talk about some rational exponents. I know you guys love them, and uh, probably not, but it's okay, because we can do it, and this really shouldn't be too difficult. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start you off with this graphic organizer, and it has all of the properties that we just saw for integer exponents, and all we've done is replaced the integers M and N with fractions, and so... If you have two bases side by side and they're the same, again, you're going to add the two fractions. So you are going to have to remember and know how to add fractions. If you divide the two bases, you have to subtract. And so you have to know how to subtract fractions. We'll talk about that. Um, we have the same rule, the, pro the power product, which distributes the fraction to both of the bases. And then we have the power quotient again, which um, you can rewrite this with different bases as a fraction with the same exponent. We have power power, which you're going to multiply the two fractions this time. And then we still have our negative exponents, which behave the same way as a flipper, just like they did with integer exponents. So there's really nothing that much more difficult or different, except that we're replacing integers with fractions or rational numbers. So it's no big deal. All right, so I've picked out some examples for you guys to see. And here's our first one. And so here we have two bases, x and x. And they have the same exponent, two thirds, I mean, I'm sorry, different exponents, two thirds and four fifths. So our first job is to add these two fractions together because we have the two bases side by side. So what we want to do is say x to the two thirds plus four fifths. So we know that what the problem is going to be. The problem is going to be how do we add fractions and subtract fractions? And so a lot of this video is going to be. Um, doing things like that. And so if we have two fractions, two thirds and four fifths, let me just put it up here with this one, two thirds plus four fifths. There's a couple of different ways you could do it. First thing you can do is you can take the two fractions and get a common denominator like this. And by the way, I know people don't like fractions, but the sooner you get a handle on them, the better it's going to be, especially for your grades. So we look at the 5 and the 3, and we want a common denominator. If the two numbers are different, just multiply them together. 5 times 3 is 15. So I want a 15 here and a 15 here. So let's think about it. 3 times what is 15? 5. 5 times 2 is 10. And so what I've done basically is I've multiplied the numerator and denominator by, by 5, both of them. And 10 over 15 is equivalent to 2 thirds. Same thing here. 5 times what is 15? 3. 3 times 4 is 12. And so 10 over 15 plus 12 over 15 is going to be 22 over 15. Now that's not the only way we can do that. You can also do it this way. 2 thirds plus 4 fifths. And this works really easy if you have, especially for positive ones, you can do what's called the butterfly method. The butterfly method, you do it like this. 5 times 2, 10, plus 3 times 4, 12, over 5 times 3 is 15. And the reason why they call it the butterfly method is because when you circle these like this, 3 times 4, and circle it like this, a lot of 7th and 8th grade teachers will tell you that looks like a butterfly and it helps students un, you know, remember that procedure. 10 plus uh, 12 is still 22 over 15. So these are the two most uh, basic methods that I'm going to use every time. All right, so getting back to our problem, what we want to do then is add two thirds and four fifths. So let's do it this way. X to the five times two is 10 plus four times three is 12 over five times three is 15. And that's going to give you x to the 22 over 15. And then that's it. All right, so if you know a different way to add fractions, that's fine. Um, but that's a basic way to do it. Okay, so here in this example, we have division now going on. Um, so x to the fifth is being divided by x to the three fourths. But we saw in our rules that you're going to subtract. So that's really x to the five minus three-fourths. So how can we do that? Five minus three-fourths. Well, let's take a look and see what we can do. So we have five minus three-fourths. 
Well, if you think about it, if you have five whole objects and you take away three fourths of one, that would leave you four and a quarter, wouldn't it? And if you have four and a quarter, that's a mixed number. We don't ever want to put mixed numbers as, as exponents. You can turn this back into an improper fraction by multiplying four times four is 16 plus one is 17 over four. So no matter what way I should do it, I should get 17 over four. Well, let's try it this way. What if I have five over one minus three over four? And what if I do the same method I did before, except I just put a minus right there. So the, uh, the common denominator would be between one and four, four here and here. One times four is four, five times four is 20. And just remember 20 divided by four is still five. And so these two fractions are equivalent. This one I already have the way I want it. 20 take away three is 17. So there's another way. Now, how can you do this with the butterfly method? Well, the way I would suggest is I would suggest you do five over one plus negative three over four. Okay, the reason why is because you need to know how to deal with that negative right there. And you have to deal with it by doing like this. Five times four is 20. And then plus negative three times one is negative three over one times four is four. But 20 plus a negative three drops you back down to 17. So three different ways you get 17 over four. I mean, just choose one. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So for me, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say 5 minus 3 fourths. And we'll just go ahead and rename them. That's probably the easiest way to go. Equals x to the. Okay, um, we want that to be a 4 here. So 20 over 4 minus 3 over 4. And all of that's the exponent. And then finally, we're going to get x to the 20 take away 3 is 17 over four. And so that one right there, um, that would be done. There's nothing more you can do with it. Okay, so here's one where we have two fractions. And so we're gonna subtract them. X to the seven over four minus five over three. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to take these two fractions and we need to um, get a common denominator. So let's do that over here in this area since I got some space. So seven over four, minus five over three. Okay, let's go ahead and rename those. Okay, so four and three, um, let's just multiply them together to get 12. Four times three is 12, so seven times three is 21. Three times four is 12, so five times four is 20. And we get 21 take away 20 is one over 12. So it turns out, our final answer would be x to the 1 over 12. Okay, and that makes sense um, because 7 over 4 is slightly bigger than 5 over 3. And we can show that by taking our calculator here and we do 7 divided by 4. And that's 1.75. 5 divided by 3 is 1.6 repeating. And so we see that this, um, this fraction is definitely a little bit bigger than this one. And the difference is going to be 1 over 12. So that makes sense. All right, let's try this one right here. And so of course we gotta get a little more complicated. Okay, so what if you get one like this? This one is gonna require a couple steps. First of all, you've got the numerator that you can clean up first, and then you have this denominator. I would just go ahead and concentrate on this first. So what is four plus one six? Because the bases are the same and they're side by side. The way I would do that is I would treat this like a mixed number. 4 plus 1 over 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 1 is 25. 25 over 6. And again, students have a hard time with that, but really it's that simple. That's all you have to do. You just have to kind of get yourself you know, motivated to do a bunch of these, and then the calculation is very simple. And over here we still have 3 fifths. Okay, so let's deal with that now. Let's go ahead and do 25 over 6, and we're going to have to subtract. Let's do 25 over 6 minus 3 over 5. Let's get a different marker because that one does not look very good. 
All right, so here's what we need now. We need a common denominator. Six times five is 30. Okay, so six times five is 30. Five times 25 is 125. And don't be afraid if you get numbers that are kind of big, that happens a lot. Five times six is 30. So six times three is 18. So now the question is, what is 125 take away 18? And that is gonna be 107 over 30. Now, if I look at this fraction, that can't be simplified at all. The factors of 107 are gonna be different than the factors of 30. And so we might as well just leave it like that. Um, and that's gonna be our exponent. So your final answer would be x to the 107 over 30. All right, so, um, so far, that's about as difficult as it's gonna get. And with this type of stuff, until you get to classes that are a little bit more advanced. So let's take a look at this one. Okay, so what's going on here? This one, we have a power of a power. And so we saw that when that happens, you have to multiply three fourths times eight fifths. Okay, this is where my students or students in general get really confused because they'll start adding these together because they're so used to it. And but this time you have to multiply. And so when you multiply, we just have to remember that we have to multiply across. You don't cross multiply, you multiply across. So we are looking at x to the eight times three is 24 over four times five is 20. Okay, now can that be simplified? Actually it could have been simplified up here. We could have canceled the four and the eight out, but let's take it one step at a time. Divide them by two, so 12 over 10. And one more time, divide them by two again, six over five. And then that's our final answer, x to the six fifths. So no big deal there. All right, let's try uh, next one. Okay, this one has a three. And so as we saw with integer exponents, we're gonna have to take that three and distribute it. So three times five fourths. Well, when you multiply a fraction times an integer, you only multiply that integer by the numerator, right? So this one's gonna be x to the 15 over four over x to the three times one is three over two. Okay, so now we have 15 over four and three over two. So we need to subtract 15 over four minus three over two. Well, the common denominator would be four, which means the first one is already good to go. But the second one, uh, we have to multiply two times two to get four, three times two is six. And then 15 take away six should be nine. And so I think we're looking at nine fourths there. And so that's gonna be equal to x to the nine over four. All right. We'll take a look at this one. This one has a negative exponent. So what I'm gonna do here first is I'm gonna flip these. Um, I, could, I could simplify that if I wanted to before I flip it. Um, it's completely up to me if I wanna do that. Um, I'm gonna flip it first just to see what happens. So I got x to the 7 thirds over x squared. And that's gonna be raised to the not negative two, but now positive two. Okay. I can clean this up a little bit and get one number out of this. I can do 7 thirds take away 2. Okay, so let's take a look at that and see what that turns out to be. My common denominator is 3. The 7 over 3 is good to go. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 7 take away 6 is 1. So it looks like what I've got then is x to the 1 third in the parentheses squared. Now I multiply these two guys together. Two times one is two over three. And it looks like x to the two thirds should be my final answer for that one. All right, uh, let's take a look at this one and see what this one looks like. Okay, we have an x and we have a y there. And we have a six on the outside and we have two fractions inside. So we're gonna have to distribute 
here and here first. Okay, so let's take a look at the x first and see what happens. 2 thirds times 6. All right, well, let's do this. What's 6 times 2? That's 12, right? But 12 divided by 3 is 4. So really, that's going to be x to the 4th times y to the 6 times 5 is 30 divided by 6 is 5 again because the 6's are going to cancel out. So we have a 5 right there. And really that expression that looked complicated is going to just turn out to be x to the 4th times y to the 5th. No big deal. And then we have this one. We have a fraction now on the outside and we have a couple different exponents here. So we're going to distribute like that. And let's see what happens. x to the 6 times 1 half would be 6 over 2. Well, that's 3. And y, 7 times 1, that's multiply the two fractions. 7 times 1 is 7. And 6 times 2 is 12. And there's really nothing we can do with that fraction. That's simplified. And then that's your final answer. All right, guys. So there's some examples of working with some rational exponents, simplifying expressions. Hope this helps. Remember to like and share and subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you guys later. Bye.